What's up you guys, Dragoon here, and it is time for another deck profile. It has been uh, a little while since our last one, so it's time to kind of see uh, how the heroes have been evolving. Uh, this is the deck I've been playing for a little while. It's uh, It works pretty nicely. It actually got me second place at ShimbokuCon, which was pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, just a quick heads up. Basically, I've kind of restructured the deck in order to focus on the elemental heroes. Uh, previously, you've seen my other builds. They were... We had the anti-heroes build, which was kind of anti-meta stuff with some heroes thrown in. And then I made the light and dark one just for fun, and it happened to work. Um, this is just basically coming back to base, just kind of structuring on those elemental heroes, and letting them do what they do best. So, let's go ahead and get right started. We've got our one of elemental heroes with one Stratos and one Ocean. Uh, these are your Search Brothers, pretty much. Stratos obviously gets you monsters out of the deck and works to remove spell and traps. And Ocean gets them out of the graveyard, or if you really want to, you can use them uh, on the field. Ocean's effect is obviously not as good as Stratos. If you're not familiar with it, he returns a hero from your grave or field during your standby phase. So you have to keep this guy alive for one turn, which is uh, kind of difficult. It just kind of depends on uh, the way things work out for you. Uh, the situation you're in, but I find him to be a really good card because he allows you to reuse Stratos, and if you can reuse Stratos a couple times in a game, it, it gives you a lot of advantage, believe it or not. Um, just being able to summon Ocean and then just keep returning Stratos to your hand every turn and just either getting another search or getting at least one free spell or trap removal off the board is really nice, and if your opponent can't deal with that, it's going to probably cost them the game. Ocean's really nice as well because he allows you to go into your Abyss Dweller more easily because he's a water, so that's pretty nice. So, uh, Speaking of Abyss Dweller, we've got two Elemental Hero Bulb Man. These guys are great for going into Abyss Dweller. Um, the Mermail matchup's pretty tough. Obviously, we, we all know Mermails are a very powerful deck. They are a very fast deck, and they're very good. Um, it's hard for older decks to keep up with them at least this helps you do it a little bit it helps you get that abyss dweller out bowman is just good because like i've said before he gives you those xc summons quickly and because i've restructured the deck um kind of not and it's not really focused on stratos but it it gives us more ability to reuse him i wanted to have the more bowman targets uh you don't really like drawing into bowman you want to search him most of the time but um Regardless, he's still good to have. He's one of the best draws you can get late game when you're uh, doing top decks. And yeah, he's just all around very good for the deck. Our three, we've got three elemental here. Neos Alias, he's pretty much the man with the plan. He does everything you need him to do. He's 1900, he's light, he's a Gemini. Uh, just all around very, very good. Um, this is your base attack monster. He's great so good when your opponent tries to phoenix chain this guy and they can't do that and then to go along with him we've got our honorary neos alias which is crusader of endymion he does everything neos does he's 1900 light gemini he's just a spellcaster instead of a warrior but no big deal uh he's really good he just like i said gives you access to pretty much everything the neos alias does for our xc summons we've got two photon thrasher um, I've talked about this card before. I think this is in every build I play. I find this card just to be so good. It's It deals with Thunder King. It's a one-card answer to Thunder King if your opponent's got one on the board, unless they decide not to use Thunder King's effect, in which case you know they have probably a card to protect him face down. Um, this guy goes into your Xyz summons really quickly. He can win you games. If you get down to a grind game, you draw this card, you special summon him, that's 2100 your opponent has to deal with, and if you're dealing with a grind game unless your opponent's playing like some ridiculously good deck that can deal with this like i don't know play elemental dragons uh he just works out stupendously um it's once again just like volban getting in those fast xc summons and just being able to be 2100 and just chill on the board it's really nice speaking of good old thunder king we've got two of him uh it's essential in this deck in my opinion uh the prophecy matchup's tough Basically, those those big decks, Mermail Prophecy um, and Elemental Dragons. I've only played against Elemat Elemental Dragons once or twice, so I don't know that much about how well the deck functions against them, but 
Uh, needless to say, those are tough matchups. They, I think they always will be tough for a deck like this, a deck that is older, that kind of has it has to rely on the newer cards, but they just don't blend as well as we'd like them to. Um, Thunder King is essential in my opinion. He's just you know that card that stops those prophecy monsters or players from searching and all that other good stuff. He deals with special summons. He's he's just very very good. You gotta play him. He's nineteen hundred. He's a light. He's he does exactly what this deck is meant to do. And our last three monsters are Hand Traps. We have one Effect Veiler, one Honest, and one Gores the Emissary of Darkness. I have opted to play Effect Veiler in this deck because, like I said, I'm focusing on Elemental Heroes. This gives me quick access to Elemental Hero the Shining, um, and obviously it works on my opponent's turn. I thought about playing two, but for now I'm trying one in the main. I have two in the, two others in the side, so... I'm not too worried about effects going into game two, and I'm never too worried about them anyway, but this is just nice to have for that game one. Honest is obviously very good, uh, just because you play plenty of light monsters, you can get that boost, and Gorus keeps you from dying, and he's the only monster in the main deck that will, in a way, be strong on his own. I mean, obviously you have to get him out, but... He, like I said, he is the only monster in the main deck that can actually, you know, uh, fend for himself. He's really big, so he gives you answers sometimes when you don't have them, so he's pretty good to have. And who doesn't like getting the Gores token? Alright, on to the spells. We've got our basics. Dark Hole, Monster Reborn, Heavy Storm, and a Mystical Space Typhoon. These cards are pretty self-explanatory. You gotta play them, at least these three. This is kind of, you know, up to you. But I'm playing this, like I talked about before, for like Fire Fist and stuff like that. It's just good to have. It's my 41st card. We've got our Duality Duo, just pretty standard fare. Um, this card's really, really good in this deck. I wish I could play three still. Obviously, that got changed quite some time ago, but um, I can understand why. Uh, Duality is just very, very good in this deck. If you open up with this card, if you're going first, you open with Duality, uh, it puts you in a very, very nice situation, provided you don't get the worst reveals in the world, but that typically doesn't happen. Um, you just set up your hand uh, to be exactly the way you want it, and just it searches for those traps, it searches for whatever you could possibly need to have yourself prepared for your opponent. It's very, very good. More search cards. We've got one reinforcement to the army and two emergency calls. This is pretty self-explanatory. Searches out for your monsters. I like to use this on Photon Thrasher if I can. I'd much rather use this on him than uh, use it on Elemental Hero just because I have those cards for that. But obviously, you dictate based on the situation. All right. Uh, heroes, heroes, heroes. We've got three Miracle Fusion. We are playing the max this time around. I've talked about before how it clogged for me in some decks. And it's true that it did. The thing is, is it can still it still has the ability to clog, but because we're playing more heroes, we're playing um, more heavily on the fusion summons and stuff like that. It shouldn't be dead as much as it would have been in my other decks. In the decks where we have all those anti-meta cards like Fossil King or Fossil King, <laughs> Fossil Dino, Pachycephalo, and um, uh, Neo Spacey and Grand Mole and stuff like that, we, we're not playing those cards. This is just. You activate this card, and you grab a big fusion monster from your uh, extra deck, and you just go in and go for your attacks. Um, it, this card, once again, I talk about the the grind game, which we don't see as often because the games don't last that long because you just die from elemental dragons and light and darkness dragon, that good stuff. <laughs> um, this card's still very good. It's, like I said about Bubble Man, it's one of the best cards you can draw late game. It's ridiculously good to draw into this card and then just banish two heroes from your graveyard and go for your... Just put a big monster on board. It's very, very good, and it's still one of my favorite cards. Our last fusion card is one Super Polymerization. I talked a minute ago about um, Elemental Dragons. They can make Light and Darkness Dragon first turn, which is one of the worst things in the world. Um, off the top of my head, I could be wrong... Uh, this and Honest are the only easy outs to Light and Darkness Dragon in this deck. Unless, obviously, you can Exceed Summon, but uh, that's a different story. Um, 
This card's very, very good to deal with problem monsters. Uh, like, Xi'an is a problem. Dolka, Lagia are problems. Um, I wish you could play this with Evil Swarm Ophion on the field, but you can't. Uh, Ophion is a problem because Ophion makes all four of these cards dead unless you can kill him quickly or make him burn out his materials. It's And a good player is probably not going to burn out those materials because they know you're playing Elemental Heroes. They know that you need these cards. Um, Evil Swarm isn't as big of a problem, in my opinion, at least for this deck, as uh, the other three I mentioned. But like I said, this card's very good to deal with those cards. Zen Mines, believe it or not, is a problem. Um, there's a lot of cards that can be problems in this deck, or in other decks for this deck. Um, and this just deals with them. The one discard isn't very nice. I don't like it, but sometimes uh, it, it works out. Sometimes you can discard a monster, then make a Miracle Fusion live, whatever. I've done that before. Uh, this card I also like. Once again, I talk about versatility. I'm a big fan of versatility. I like my decks to have multiple options, and this does this. This card allows me to OTK. If you know I've got a couple monsters on board, I attack, attack. Gets them down to, I don't know, 2,000 life points. I can activate this battle phase, discard a card, and go for game. It's just one of those ways you can, you can provide yourself more plays. And once again, it's a very good card. My favorite monster to use with this is Stratos, uh, simply because you have plenty of ways to get him back, and he can't combo with any other card in the deck, pretty much. Like, for example, Neos can combo with Gemini Spark and stuff like that. So, that's that. On the note of Gemini Spark, we play three of them. You have to play three, unless you're not uh, playing as many Gemini monsters. I play four Gemini monsters uh, base, so I should not have any problems making this card work out for me. Um, and I have ways to search for my Gemini monsters with the emergency calls, the Stratos, the reinforcement of the army. I've got ways to get to them more quickly, but on their own, there are four Geminis in the deck and three Sparks. I, I never like to play three for three. That's just a personal preference for me. Um, yeah, Gemini Spark is integral. It allows you to really, really, um, interrupt your opponent's turns. It allows that you to, um kind of break up their plays, and use it, if you use it in the right way, you can gain advantage off this card really well. Um, for example, if your opponent activates a bottomless trap hole when you normal summon your uh, Neos alias, you can activate Gemini Spark, dodge that banishment, getting him in the graveyard, target one of their other cards, deal with that, and then draw a card. And you never know, you could draw into a Miracle Fusion, I've done it before, activate that, and then boom, you just got... You've just cleared the way for your big fusion monster to go deal some damage. It's a very, very good card. It's one of my favorite cards, too. I, As soon as this, when I saw this card come out, I think it was in Stardust Overdrive, I was just like, oh my gosh, i got to get my hands on this card. Um, yeah, it's a really sweet card. All right, on to the traps. We've got Solemn Judgment and Solemn Warning. These are the Solemn Duo. Uh, very important, in my opinion. You've got to be able to negate those summons and negate those cards because if you're not negating them, you're going to have to find ways to deal with them once they're on the board, and that can be tough. Um, I find Solemn Judgment to be very important now that Solemn Warning is at 1. It's been at 1 for a little while, obviously. But I still find it to be very important, this format, at least in my opinion, and for my own play style. I just end up falling on Solemn Judgment a lot more than I used to. Um, Solemn Judgment's never a bad card, in my opinion. I never, I never pay a bunch of life points for this card. I always, even if I draw in the beginning, I will never activate it in paying a ton of life points unless I know I'm going to lose if I don't. I will save this card for many turns. My opponent will end up thinking it's something terrible because I just have it set for so long and I don't do anything with it. And then when they make to uh, go to make a big push or they go to stop me from making mine, I flip this up and pay a very little amount of life points. It's paying half is something you can always do. And I cannot tell you the amount of times I have cut myself down to 100 life points, down to 50 life points. I've even cut myself down to 25 life points before, and it wins games for me. So I find it to be a very important piece of the deck. We've got some mass removal traps in the form of two torrential tribute. It's a card that I'd honestly probably play the max of um, at all times in this deck. I mean, it's just really good. Uh, just like Gemini Spark, it's nice to interrupt your opponent's turns, interrupt their plays, uh, it's mass removal on your opponent's turn. You can summon a Neos, 
or Crusader Vendemion. Set this in a Gemini Spark and hope your opponent doesn't have Heavy Storm and mess you up. But if it works out the way you want, they'll summon, like, I don't know, Tour Guide, Rescue Rabbit, whatever. They summon that. Uh, they get their monsters out. You flip this up, and then they say, okay, that's fine. You chain the Gemini Spark, which that's obviously not. <laughs> you chain the Gemini Spark, deal with another card on their field, and, you know, it makes this not is not go a loss for you. It's just really great card, in my opinion. Um, a favorite trap of mine. We've got some spot removal for our two bottomless trap holes. A uh, really nice card to have in a variety of situations. Uh, Fire Fist, this card is pretty cool to use against them. Of course, if they have, like, Forbidden Lance, that's... Well, what can you do? Uh, Forbidden Lance is really annoying in this deck, honestly, because you, they can chain it to, like, your Gemini Spark, so you can't, you can't draw cards and stuff like that, and it makes you tribute for your Neos for nothing. Uh, I'm kind of glad for Ben Lance is like $20 for the common now because it makes it see I don't have to, I don't have to see it as often unless you're playing obviously at a bigger event but Bombless Trap is really nice um, it's nice to deal with uh, Rescue Rabbit because you can just set this and when they summon the two mo normal monsters you just flip this up and you can um, banish them both and if they go ahead and Lance one of them well the other one's still going to get destroyed which is pretty nice so uh, definitely a good card in my opinion and the last of my trap cards are all one ofs. We've got one compulsory evacuation device, one call of the haunted. Um, I was playing two before. I tr I'm trying one minus one, and that's where I uh, put in the effect veiler. It's just uh, giving me the ability to do something on my opponent's turn um, rather than the whole deck rely on waiting until my turn. Um, it's just one of those things. Um, I kind of talked about when I had effect filler out. So, I mean, it's still a very, very good card. It helps you deal with problem, exceeds, synchros, fusions, whatever. Uh, very good, chainable card. As far as Call of the Haunted goes, it's really nice because you can get your monsters back, uh, go for those extra exceeds plays. Uh, once again, you can flip this up, uh, get Stratos, his effect, grab Bubble Man, and Bubble Man's effect, special summon, you've got an exceeds summon. You can use this, get Ocean, um... Standby phase, Ocean's Effect, get Stratos, Stratos' Effect, get another monster. It just provides you a lot of uh, really cool plays. If your opponent gets the Gores out of your hand, gets in the graveyard, you can use this, bring them back, and uh, have a 2700 to go ahead and fight with. Pretty nice. And our last two traps are for defense. I've talked about these before. Magic Drain, Starlight Road. Obviously, you need this. This is a staple trap card, in my opinion. Uh, deals with Dark Hole, Torrential, Heavy Storm, all those good things. And Magic Drain is just a personal favorite of mine. It just, a lot of decks play spells that are important to them, so this lets you help deal with them a little bit. Um, if your opponent wants to activate something, they're going to have to discard a card, so you can go ahead and just make them waste their spell cards in order to get their other ones off. And if you've got this set plus another card that you don't really need and your opponent goes to Heavy Storm, it's the greatest thing ever because you'll flip this up and either you won't lose your other card, which could come in handy later in the game, or your opponent's going to have to 2 for 2 you. So if, if you've got 2 with a Magic Drain, Starlight Road never becomes a plus for your opponent, which is pretty cool. So that's that. Let's go to the extra deck. Fusions first. We've got uh, 2 Shiny. He's pretty slow explanatory. I'm not really going to go into these guys too much. Um, 1 Absolute Zero. 1 Escurdi Dao. 1 Great Tornado. 1 Nova Master. And one Elemental Hero Gaia. So we've got all of our cool fusion guys here. We need them all for super polymerization. Um, you'll never find yourself needing like a third Shining or anything like that. Because none of these other cards are bad. Like Great Tornado is really cool. Cutting your uh, opponent's monsters and attack and defense in half, which is sweet. Nova Master is great. lets you draw cards. And uh, Absolute Zero is always very good too. So none of these cards are particularly bad. You can do plenty of things with these cards. We've got our one Synchro, which is our Stardust Dragon. Obviously, you need that for Starlight Road. And our Xyz Monsters. So, talk about this one first, because it's a new addition. Starleash Paladynamo. Uh, this guy's pretty sweet. I replaced him with... Uh, I replaced Excalibur for him. I'm, there are situations when I miss Excalibur, but there are also situations when I'm glad I picked this guy. Uh, he has to be made with two Light Monsters, rather than the two Warriors. However... I don't feel like I've lost the ability to exceed someone in the sky rather than Excalibur, because even though I do play a lot of warriors, I also play a decent amount of non-warrior light monsters. For example, Thunder King Ryo and um, Crusader Vendemion. So I can still go into this guy 
with relative ease, you know, special summoning a Photon Thrasher, uh, normal summoning uh, Neos Alias or Crusader Vendemion, whatever. I picked this card because I feel like this card and um, Excalibur are just as susceptible to Effect Veiler as each other, um, except I feel like this guy offers me a little bit more advantage. So, for example, say my opponent has a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon on the field, and I need to get rid of it because I don't want them getting that effect multiple times. I can overlay for Excalibur, boost his attack to 4,000 with his effect by detaching the two materials, and go ahead and go for um, the attack. Now, if my opponent's got a Mirror Force or a Dimensional Prison, whatever, um, we'll use Mirror Force as the example, then Excalibur's gone, and I just pretty much wasted those two materials. However, if I made Starleash Paladynamo in that situation, I bring this guy out, I detach his two materials, and so what he'll do is he'll make Red Eyes' his attack go down to zero, and he'll negate his effect. So if I go in attack and my opponent flips over that Mirror Force, well, Red Eyes is still going to have his effect negated and be at zero attack, which is just great because it does what I kind of wanted to do in the first place. It just didn't let me deal with the monster that turn because my opponent had protection. Also, what's great about this card is... When it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, I get to draw a card. So it helps me recuperate my loss a little bit, which is why I'm playing uh, Starleash Paladynamo over Excalibur right now. Um, it's just testing right now, and so far I'm liking it. Some situations, like I said, I miss Excalibur, but that's neither here nor there. So the rest of our Xyz, uh, Xyz monsters you should be pretty familiar with. We've got Blade Armor Ninja, Gaga Ga Cowboy, uh, Black Ship of Corn, very essential in my opinion. Because, like I said before, uh, cards like Zenmai, Gachi, and stuff like that are kind of tough to deal with. Um, Abyss Dweller, so much more readily available in this deck because we play uh, three water monsters in the main deck, which is pretty nice. Uh, let's get to this card and boost him in that 22 and then, you know, keep him alive for a few turns. Wins, it won me a game against Dark World because I just kept him alive and they couldn't do a thing about it. And then we've got My Stroke, the Symphony Jin, and uh, Gym Knight Pearl. So, um, quickly, what I want to talk about is a little bit about Evil Swarms. Evil Swarms, like I said, they can be tough because Ophion does lock out your fusion summons pretty much. But if you can play the way, if you can play the right way, you do have plenty of ways out of the card. Um, that's why we. Heroes are kind of nice in my opinion because once again it talks about that versatility that I would love. I love that I can make Xyz monsters that can deal with them. Uh, we've got Gemini Pearl, which is really great in my opinion. Twenty six hundred attack. Uh, I don't even care that he's having an effect because he can't be targeted by Skill Drain, which is or not Skill Drain, <laughs> Fiendish Chain. So we've got Gemini Pearl, Gaga Ga Cowboy, uh, Starleash Paladynamo, and my favorite to deal with Ophion is uh, My Stroke. Just because my stroke lets me go ahead and, and flip him into face down, and then I can attack. And if my opponent's got something to protect Ophion, I can just attach my stroke's uh, material to keep him alive and let that attack go through. Also, if some, for some reason they had a dimensional prison, they banished my stroke. One of my other monsters could deal with Ophion because he only has, I think, 1650 defense points. So we've got four ways out of the card. They can only make three of them. So in theory, if we can make all of our cards, uh, we can deal with Ophion. Um, so that's kind of the whole thing about Evil Swarms. I don't find them to be as much of a problem as other decks as, like, Mermails and stuff like that. But, uh, they can be tricky. You just have to play around them and, uh, do your best at, uh, keeping your advantage the way you want it to be. But anyway, that's the deck profile, you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we will catch you later.